Hello everybody, this is Shane with Starters Woodworking. And last weekend, I just finished up my very first craft show with woodworking. And in this video, I'm going to be sharing some tips and tricks and maybe a couple things that I learned to help you in the future. So let's get right into the video. So to start off this video, I'm going to be going over a couple of questions that I feel like a lot of people might have. The first question is, what do I sell? And that really all comes down to what you like to make. Craft shows, there's something you wanna have fun at, so you wanna make something that you enjoy making. You also wanna to try to find something unique that stands out among the crowd that will bring people into your stand. So another question people may have or may need to ask themselves is, is this show for me? Now there are some shows or events out there that aren't necessarily the best for selling crafts or really anything in general. So shows that have a lot of live entertainment and are meant for you to bring your whole family might not be the best option to sell at. This is gonna be because a majority of the crowd might not be focused on buying anything at the show that day. So instead, try to focus on a show that might have a lot of other craft vendors or other small businesses trying to sell their product. The last question you may need to figure out is who is your target audience? Who are you trying to make things for? And again, this kind of comes down to what you want to make. I try to be as open as possible and have the biggest and widest target audience as possible to give me a better chance of selling more things. So this is why I make say like cutting boards to river trays to anything that you can have around the house really. Something you might not want to limit yourself to is just one product. That really could lower your exposure and limit the amount of people you get your brand out to. Now I'm going to go over a couple of things that I made and prepared for this craft show. So when I signed up for this craft show, I was about two weeks out and only had that much time to plan and prepare what I was going to make. So I was right off the bat a little rushed and scared that I wasn't gonna get everything done. Luckily, it was only a one day show and a little smaller. And I did this on purpose because I knew it was my first show. And I wanted to get a show under my belt. So having only 14 days, I got right into it. The first thing that I made, and I guess kind of one of my signature items, is the end grain cutting boards. And I knew these were gonna take a good while, so I started on these right away. So here are a couple of the designs I went for for my end grain cutting boards, and I really loved how these turned out. And I thought they would be a great way to catch some people's eyes and just spark a conversation because, you know, a lot of people don't really know how these cutting boards were made. And like I said, it's just a great way to start a conversation with someone and make a relationship with a customer. The next thing I prepared for the show were little charcuterie boards. And they were about 18 inches long by seven inches wide. And these were super simple to make. I just cut up a bunch of strips of random kinds of wood and glued them together and drilled a little hole at the one end to act as a handle or if you wanted to hang it as a decoration and put a little round on the edge and then chamfered over everything. And these were great. The next thing I made were cheese boards or prep boards or whatever you wanna call them. They have more of like a hand carved natural handle on them just to make them a little bit more unique and something different. The next thing I had were these resin serving trays. And the funny thing about these is that I actually made these like a year and a half ago, but I never really tried to sell them. I really, at the time, I just wanted to make something. So I made them and just, they were sitting around my house for like a year and a half. And I thought, what better opportunity than to try to sell these here? So along with the end grain cutting boards, I also made two face grain cutting boards just as a cheaper option. If people still wanted a cutting board, but you know, not something as high end, and this would take me a lot less time, so I could sell them for a little cheaper than my end grain cutting boards, and they still turned out really great, I love them. Also, I had some mini end grain cutting boards, and if you follow me on Instagram, you know I've made some American flag cutting boards, and these mini cutting boards actually were the cutoff where the stars would be in the American flag, so I had two of them laying around, and I figured they were already made, all I had to do was square them up and finish them. And I figured, why not? I mean, I have them made and I'll try to sell them and we'll see what happens. After that, everything was kind of just miscellaneous. I had a couple like live edge uh, prep board and I had a couple of foyer key rings with little shelves on them that I was really happy how it turned out. And 
like I said, just some miscellaneous stuff. So now let's get into the setup of the show and my layout that I went with. So for my end grain cutting boards, I kind of wanted them all together and I ended up using a uh, half bushel crates to create a two tiered kind of system for them. So they kind of looked like they were sitting up on bleachers or something. And other than that, really, like I said, they were my main focus. Everything else was kind of just a fill in. So you can kind of see how I laid everything out. So I ended up adding a little bit of green thanks to my sister-in-law who really has a good eye for that kind of stuff and thought it would be a great touch and I also agreed with her. Also something I wanna to touch on real quick is my business cards that I ordered. So my girlfriend actually designed these for me and I was super happy with how she turned out. She is awesome with this kind of stuff and I couldn't have done it without her truly. So I really have to thank a bunch of people that helped me throughout this process as well. So after my show, we can now get into what sold because I'm sure that's a big question on a lot of your minds. So for the end grain cutting boards, drum roll please, and none of them sold. Sadly, none of them sold anywhere, but really, like I said, like I was hoping, they were the main focal point. They really brought a lot of people into my show and I really got a lot of compliments on them, which really was great to hear. And it also sparked a lot of conversations and questions and it made it great to talk to the customers. Since I didn't sell any of my end grain cutting boards, sadly, we'll get into my biggest seller. My biggest seller, surprisingly to me, were actually those charcuterie boards that I made. So I made five of those and I sold all five of them within like the first three hours of the show. People loved these. And I ended up selling these for 40 bucks, which I thought was a pretty reasonable price tag. So now for the future, I know to make a bunch more of these and maybe have them in a little different display, maybe have them like shelves to where I can stack them up easily without taking up so much room on my table. Also a big item that brought a lot of people into the tent were those river resin serving trays. A lot of people were really intrigued and have never really seen that resin before. So it was cool to talk to them and, and explain the process that I took and how I did them. And I actually sold two of them during the show. And the next day after someone messaged me on Instagram and bought the third one. So I sold out of all of those two. So all in all, I did sell a couple things, but honestly, that's really not what craft shows are about. Yes, you wanna make money, you wanna make all your hard work pay off and to sell out on everything, but realistically, that's probably not going to happen. I easily quadrupled the price to get into the show, so that really wasn't a worry at all. So I still made a good amount of money. Honestly, the most important thing from the show is networking and people taking your business cards, people ordering from you in the future or having awesome ideas that you can build for them in the future and you know, getting your name out there and advertising, that is really the main point of these shows. And one thing I just wanna say, if you're planning on doing these, is get ready to talk. People like when you greet them when you come in and just tell them all about your business and your meaning behind your brand. So anyways, I am actually planning to do another show in a month. So luckily I have everything that I built for this show for this next show. And this show coming up is actually going to be a two day show and we'll probably have like three to four times the amount of people there. So I have to be super prepared for this show, but I am super excited and can't wait to meet a lot of new people. So anyways, that is the end of the video and I very much appreciate you watching to the end and if you are planning to do your own craft show, I wish you the best of luck and I hope you sell everything. But if you think you learned something from this video, please consider subscribing and hitting that like button. I will see you all in the next one. Bye.